this is Lady Boule, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, it seems as if our friend Kevin Hart is in trouble for saying that ancient Egyptians were black. Here he is saying, you are not Egyptian, talking to the modern Egyptians that are living in Egypt. You are not Egyptian. Your ancestors did not build our pyramids. Our ancestors did. So, Kevin Hart is supposed to be doing a show, a comedy show, in Egypt in February. So this came out in December, I think it was, or late November. So the Egyptians, the modern Egyptians, are angry. And they are saying they need to cancel Kevin Hart because he is lying that their ancestors were the ancient Egyptians. Now the problem with this argument is that the ancient Egyptians actually have identified themselves. They left paintings of themselves on the walls of caves, in the pyramids, even in the museums. There are statues and sculptures and busts of the ancient Egyptians. And there is no question that these are African people with African features and African hair. Yet, there are the Egyptologists, Europeans, and Middle Eastern people who insist that these people were not black. And at this point, it has just become ridiculous. Herodotus, the Greek historian and geographer who traveled widely and wrote about what he saw and who is known as the father of history, described the ancient Egyptians. He described Egyptians as dark-skinned with woolly hair like their neighbors to the south, the Kushites. Unlike present-day Europeans, Herodotus had no agenda or racial bias. He just simply described what he saw and what he thought of the people he encountered. So it doesn't matter how much evidence they have to the contrary, they being the Egyptologists, the Europeans, and the Middle Easterners, they are going to believe those ancient Egyptians were white because that's what they want to believe. When they went into Egypt, the Europeans went into Egypt back in the 1800s and, and saw that grand, magnificent society. They made up in their minds that black people could not have done this. So they went about knocking off the noses of the statues in Egypt. Because your nose is the center of your face. It defines you as much or more than anything. So they knocked off the noses to give them a more ambiguous look. What black historians say is they knocked off their noses for better white poses. But we can still see in their lips of the, and the shape of their heads that they were black. So dark skin and woolly hair is about as clear as it can get. And they ran that scam for a long time. Even as people that went to Egypt and studied the paintings on the wall, the sculptures and the artifacts could see that the people were black. The Egyptologists and the Europeans insisted that those were not black people that they were looking at. In 1954, the Senegalese historian, Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop, and I'm sure I didn't pronounce his name right, argued that the ancient Egyptians were black. And he talked about their broad noses the shape of their heads, their hairstyles, the things that make black people black. Those were the things he argued. And those were fighting words back in those days. And they're fighting words today. Except that something has happened. Technology has caught up with them. This line about the ancient Egyptians started in the 1800s during slavery, during the transatlantic slave trade. And it wasn't just the transatlantic slave trade. There was also the Trans-Saharan slave trade where Africans were captured in East Africa and forced into slavery in Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. They had us over a barrel. We couldn't read, we couldn't write, we couldn't speak our own language, we couldn't communicate with each other. So we were transformed from proud creators and builders into slaves. And that was when they decided that they were going to take us out of the creation story 
and tell the world that we have made no contribution to world civilization. That is when they went into Egypt and made themselves the builders of that great civilization. I'm going to show you a video clip of an Egyptologist in Egypt doing a DNA test on the corpse of a member of the ruling class of ancient Egypt. He is trying to prove that this individual had a Mediterranean look. They moved away from that European look because everybody by now knows that in the hot sun in Egypt, a Caucasian person would not have been able to withstand that heat in ancient times. So now they're trying to prove that the ancient Egyptians had a Mediterranean look as close to white as they could get. But the CT scan has one more surprise for Alejandro. Shamai's ethnicity. Well, they have just told me that uh, Shamai had a Nubian feature, which means that um, their ruling family was probably Nubian, and th that was unexpected. Examining Shamai's anatomy closely, the thickness of his bones and the shape of his nasal cavity, the anthropologists think he was a black African, likely from neighboring Nubia. A huge revelation that challenges the prevailing image of the Egyptian ruling class. We always thought the ancient Egyptian elite were Mediterranean type. And in this sense, Shema is representing the society of, uh, of the frontier in which different ethnic uh, groups were mixed. At the end, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. Shemai was Egyptian. His nasal cavity gave him away, which means his nose gave him away. And that goes back to them going up in Egypt and knocking off the noses of those statues to try to disfigure them and disguise them and turn them into somebody that they weren't. But each time they do these DNA tests now, when they tell the truth, they realize he was a Nubian. He didn't even want to say he was black. The commentator had to say he was black. He was a black African, a Nubian. All of them were Nubians. They were all the same people. What happened in Egypt is that they went in there and carved out that little small space in Egypt and tried to separate Egypt from the rest of Africa, including Sudan and Ethiopia, where the people are still black. They're trying to prove a lie. You cannot prove a lie, and so they're getting embarrassed every time. The ancient Egyptians are screaming as loudly as they can who they were, what race they belonged to, but they don't want to accept it. So that means that the Egyptians, those modern Egyptians, those are Arabs, they are not teaching history. They are not telling the truth. Uh, this goes back to the Bible. It will sound strange to those who don't believe in the scriptures, but in Ezekiel, the 29th chapter and the 19th verse, God said, I will give the land of Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. That means he was taking it from the Africans and giving it to Nebuchadnezzar. And it was because of disobedience. Egypt was so powerful and the pharaohs of Egypt had become so arrogant in their power and in their position that God had warned them and they had not heeded the warning. One of the pharaohs in particular really made God mad. In the 29th chapter, in the second verse, God said, Son of man, set your face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all Egypt. He said, Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which has said, my river is my own, and I have made it for myself. Now he's talking about Pharaoh Hophra. God was really angry with the statement that Pharaoh Hophra made, talking about the Nile River. He said, the river is my own. I have made it for myself. Now the Pharaoh of Egypt has taken the place of God. He made the river. So when we wonder how the land of Egypt 
was lost to Africans and given to the Arabs, God did it according to scripture. He said, I'm going to give Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Now, Egypt has changed hands a number of times. The Greeks, the Persians, the Romans, the British, the Babylonians. I mean, I don't know, even I'm not even sure if I got the right order. But it ultimately ended up in the hands of the Arabs, the Babylonians. That's who's over there now. They are not the original people, but they are over there legitimately because according to scripture, God gave Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar. So what happened to the ancient Egyptians? Well, some of them are still there. The black Egyptians are still there. Some of them are still there. Some of them were taken off into captivity and some of them migrated out like, like Africans do when invaders come because the invaders came. And it took a while. They said it took a thousand years to take them down. Because Egypt was just that powerful. But they went down. And when they went down, they really went down. So God can take any land away from anybody that he wants and give it to anybody that he wants. And, 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 and the thing about it is that people don't want to connect the scripture with reality. But it really is true. So Kevin Hart had the courage to do it and he said it and he did not take it back and they can cancel him if he want, if they want to but there are some black Egyptians in Egypt today who need people to speak up for them a few years ago I was on the internet in one of those conversation threads and an Egyptian from the United States was talking to an Egyptian back in Egypt and the Egyptian in Egypt said to the one in the United States, those black Americans keep talking about ancient Egyptians being black. He said, we're still here. This came up on my Twitter page. We support Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is welcome to Kemet. Kemet is the original name for Egypt and it means land of the blacks. And I can only assume that a black Egyptian posted this on social media. So congratulations to Kevin Hart for giving them courage and inspiration. And just for your viewing pleasure, I'm going to give you a little, um, I'm going to give you a little gallery of ancient Egyptian pharaohs. So when black people will say we were rulers and we were kings and queens, they're not lying. These people are clearly black. Their noses are broken for better white poses, but you can still see that these are African people with African features and they were pharaohs of Egypt. So they, they've identified themselves. They are screaming to the world who they are. People just don't want to believe them. And I hope you notice that several of their noses have been knocked off. These are not all of the black pharaohs, but these were the ones that I could find more easily. It comes as a surprise to many that at least three of these pharaohs are mentioned in the Bible. Pharaoh Taharka, Hophra, and Necho. 
Taharqa is referenced in 2 Kings 19th chapter 19th verse and Isaiah 37th chapter and the 9th verse. He is credited with saving Jerusalem from the Assyrians. Pharaoh Hophra is referenced in Ezekiel the 29th chapter. He's in several verses of that chapter. Hophra is the one that made God so mad by saying that the Nile River was his and that he had made it for himself. Pharaoh Necho II is referenced in 2 Kings the 23rd chapter. He was a successful king of Egypt and he continued to fight and win some battles of Egypt. But God had already given Egypt to Nebuchadnezzar, which was Babylon. And though they fought for a long time, it took a long time to take them down, but eventually the Babylonians prevailed. Now we know that no study of ancient Egypt would be complete without mentioning King Tut, King Tutankhamun. He died at such a young age, 19, that there's not much to be said for him. But I am going to show you his family. His grandparents are Amenhotep III and Queen Tai. And you have to look at their features. King Tut has the same features as his grandfather. Look at the nose and the mouth. And Queen Tai always identifies herself as a black woman. His parents are Akhenaten, Pharaoh Akhenaten. And they don't know exactly if his mother is Queen Kaya or another of Akhenaten's wives. Queen Kaya is said to be a possibility and you have to look past that white alabaster on her face and look at her hairstyle, which is braids, and her features, which are broad African features. Well, we began with Kevin Hart and we'll end with Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart has brought something to the surface that has been boiling underneath, and that is that People are claiming to be descendants of ancient Egyptians, and they're not. And so he just said it. You are not the ancient Egyptians. And although those people are angry, I think it's something that was very timely and needed to be said. So we'll see how his show goes in Egypt. I want to thank the subscriber for asking me to do this video. It took me a time to pull everything together. But I'm glad you asked me to do it. I'm glad I did it, and I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.